the odd thing is that if you look at this expression, this is really very similar to what you will have to do anyway to normalize your wave function. So we're going to use this uh, condition, this integral, in order to calculate the uh, normalization constant for different um, values of my principal quantum number. Remember, the normalization condition is that you have to integrate your probability density over all space in the axis where your bond is vibrating. And the integral should be equal to 1 because, for sure, you're going to find the particle somewhere in this region of the space. Uh, with that, it's very important to make this note. If uh, my wave function is in terms of this x-axis, the bond vibration axis, if I change my variable, like in this case to this reduced variable chi, I have to use the definition of chi in terms of my variable x, because if I'm making my change of variable, remember that I have to change that wherever this appears, and with that I also have to change my variable of integration. So using that definition that I had here, I can say now that dx is going to be equal to alpha d chi. This substitution is going to give me the correct result in case that I want to do the normalization constant. Don't forget changing this variable now to chi, uh, keeping this alpha. Because now this normalization condition, if you are integrating over your reduced coordinate chi, it's going to be this expression. So pay attention to this value of alpha, but at the end of the day, if you're integrating over all space, it should be equal to 1 for the ground state, where the principal quantum number is equal to 0. And I have this expression. So my polynomial now is going to be equal to 1. This is going to be the normalization constant associated to the ground state, and this is my Gaussian function in terms of my reduced coordinate. So the probability density, remember that it's going to be equal to the complex conjugate of my wave function times my wave function, and then my variable of integration is chi, but because I changed that with respect to the original variable x, then I have to do this change of variable alpha d chi. When I do all the proper substitutions, I end up having this integral that according to my orthonormality condition, it's going to be in terms of the square root of pi. So for zero, it's going to be square root of pi, uh, 2 to the power of 0, since those two are the same, 0 factorial, those two terms are equal to 1. When I solve for n sub 0, then I end up having the normalization constant for the ground state in terms of uh, like this, 1 over alpha square root of pi, everything to the power of 1 half. Good. Now what happens if I am looking at the first excited state, now my wave function, the index is going to be 1 for the vibrational quantum number, the normalization constant associated with that state, Hermit polynomial for that state times my Gaussian function. I do the same substitutions I did before. Again, do not forget to have the proper substitution of dx. So that's where this alpha comes from. And then you do all the algebra that you need to do, and then you use orthonormality condition to calculate the uh, value of this integral. Now, remember, it's always going to give you a value in terms of uh, multiples of the square root of pi. This index is the same, and that's what defines this exponent for 2 and this uh, factorial for that number. So this is going to be equal to 2 to the power of 1, 2, 1 factorial is 1. So you end up with this expression that it's a, little, it's a little bit different from the normalization constant for the ground state. So that just to show that, indeed, the normalization constants are different depending on this principal this, uh, principal quantum number. OK, so let's use Mathematica in order to help us calculate the normalization constant for the different vibrational quantum numbers. Here I'm defining the value of my normalization constant uh, in terms of my reduced variable chi. And just to give you an idea here, alpha is a number, but remember that that uh, has some values related to the harmonic oscillator that you have in your problem, so you have to update it with actual values, numerical values, once you have a specific problem to solve. But in this case, uh, I'm, we're just going to be doing this generically. We knew that for the previous calculation that we tried, that the principal quantum number zero, it was going to give you this value. When it's equal to one, this is what we just calculated here, one over the square root of two times the square root of alpha times pi to the power of one fourth, which is the same as what we have here. And then uh, by using Mathematica, we can get to calculate any uh, normalization constant check now is uh, that our wave functions are indeed normalized. So again, we are going to define now the normalization constant. With that, I'm going to include it into the definition of my wave function. Remember, three uh, different components, the normalization constant, the Hermit polynomial, and the Gaussian function. Uh, from there, I can also define the probability density as the square of the wave function. And I can integrate from all over all space, in this case from minus infinity to infinity, that particular probability density, that should give me equal to 1. And I'm here, I'm particularly calculating for the 8 excited state of the harmonic oscillator. Remember that in this case, in my, since my variable of integration is the reduced coordinate chi, whenever I do the integration, I have to do the substitution instead of dx, the uh, axis of vibration of my bond. Now, this variable chi will be, um, dx will be equal to alpha d chi. So don't forget this part. Uh, so the integration finally gives me equal to 1. I can do it for any other state of the harmonic oscillator, in this case, the second excited state still gives me 1 for the ground state, should give me 1. The function, then, it's normalized. So yes, this is a normalization constant. And of course, if you're trying to practice, again, uh, some of the different features or some of the different uh, syntax that you can use in, in Mathematica, and what I'm presenting here in this table is basically printing the principal quantum number first, then what is the value of the integrand, 
alpha times the probability density, and then I'm calculating the probability density times alpha over all space in this variable um, chi. And I'm doing it for the first 11 states of my harmonic oscillator. And then what this table ret returns, as we expected, is that all of those, the integral over all space of the probability density should be equal to 1, since my wave function is normalized. Anyhow, you can see that how complicated the, uh, the integrants, uh, because of the Hermit polynomials, can become. So instead of doing this by hand, you again can do software, and that's one of the things that I, I think it's, in this case, using software, it's very useful. It helps you simplify your life. Okay, and with that, I wanted to also, for you, try uh, these other values. You can, of course, um, use uh, software, but also I will ask you just to practice the use of this uh, orthonormality condition formula. Sometimes it's really good to know these kind of relatively simple integrals because even, even if you uh, know how to use the software, sometimes it just takes you longer to set up the calculations rather than just using these uh, relatively straightforward uh, formulas. Okay, uh, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later.